So we, we realize that, that we do live in a world where, I, I mean, I have friends who get on Facebook and they're like, uh, you know, hey, we, uh, ISIS and, and, and Muslims and, well, you know, it's, they're, we're, they're worshiping, it's the same God. And the problem is it's not the same God. If I take somebody else in this room who I know, uh, I'm not going to pick anybody out, but, but, but if I were to pick somebody who I know had a horrible relationship with their father, they just had a, a really bad father. And you talk about your father and I talk about my father. We're using the same name, but trust me, we're not talking about the same person. When Abraham was, was in in promise and in covenant that he was going to be the father of a great nation, he and his wife, Sarah, decided they would kind of jump ahead. And from that came Ishmael. Ishmael is the father of the Arab nations. Ishmael is the father of uh, the, the Muslim nations and, and all those nations. Okay, so, and, and he was 13 when all of a sudden God said, okay, now is time. And so he brought forth Isaac. What happened to Ishmael? I think it's really interesting when you think about the fact, who was it that, that bought Joseph out of the hole um, when his brothers threw him down in the hole. It was Ishmaelites. So Ishmael, generations later, gets to be kind of the person who rescues Joseph out of the well, that he would have, had he been left there, he would have died. So, see, God can use anybody and will use anybody according to his will and according to his plan, and he can speak he can speak to anybody, and he can use anybody. And so then, so Ishmael, and, and if you, when you go and you, you type in, you know, uh, what, what, a, you know what a, the Muslims believe about Ishmael and all this other stuff, um, they have some pretty wacky stuff in there about, well, you know, Ishmael, um, he had a son, and he met the son's daughter, but he said, no, you're not going to go, and so they killed her, and so he came back and said, okay, well, I like this daughter. It's, it's, some, it's some really bizarre stuff, but here's what I do know, that God that I pray to, Yahweh, Father God, he is in relationship to Jesus, and he is in relationship to the Holy Spirit. So if you're telling me that your God is the same as that God, is your God related to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit? Well, no, no, he's not. Then it's not the same God, because my God is related to Jesus and he's related to the Holy Spirit. So you may be using the same terminology. You may be even thinking that, that, well, the origins are the same. Look, if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, his origin is how he is right now. His origin didn't morph, and at some point, well, at some point, he kind of let himself branch off and start this whole new, that's not, that does not line up with Scripture. So while, while people can, can, can very honestly say, well, you know, it's all, it's all the same God, it is not the same God. It's just, it's not. How do you know? Well, because of who he's related to and how he acts, how he behaves, how he conducts himself. He is, it's very different. And, um, and like Sally said, okay, so God is love. Well, now love is God. Well, then let's just all love each other and, and, and we can all get along. So, yes, John, uh, Jesus is not praying that we would be unified as a people. He's praying that I would be unified with him, that Dave would be unified with him, that Sally would be unified with him. And guess what? If Sally and Dave and I are all unified with God, we have no choice but to be unified with each other because we're all together. It's like uh, if Sally takes Emma and puts her in the car to go somewhere, and I take Julia and put her in the car to go somewhere, but Sally and I have gotten in the same car, guess what? Emma and Julia are going to the same place, whether they want to or not. So I, I, am, I am with him, and he is with me, and, and it's really cool. So let's look at this. There's only six verses, and, and I do think that while he wasn't praying for church unity, this is the key to unity. Now, when, when Sally's talking about uh, the Convergent Church and, and, and these other things, and, and talk about a global church, when I talk about the global church, I'm talking about the bride of Christ. And guess what? The bride of Christ is many colors, is many, many nationalities, is many denominations, and, and that's, that is the, that's the cold hard fact. And, and I've said before, um, you know, people are like, I just wish there was just one church. And I always say, where would we all park? Because it would, um, okay, yes, yes, I, I have a simplistic way of looking at things. John chapter 17, verse 20. 
I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word, meaning the disciples' word. So these 11 guys, I've prayed something specific and powerful for them, and now I'm going to go on and I'm going to pray for the people who are going to believe because of the words of these 11 guys, and that's us. That's those of us who've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We've come to the place where, A, we admit we're a sinner. It separates us from God. B, we believe that Jesus Christ is the only means of salvation. And C, we've confessed him with our life, with our mouth, with our heart, with our actions. We've confessed him as Lord. We've taken him as Lord. And then we know that we know that we know that we are one with Jesus Christ. So, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. How is the world going to believe that Jesus was sent by God? Well, when they look at people who are Christians, Christ followers, um, and remember, Christ means anointed one. So, Jesus, the anointed one, and now he has Christians, the anointed ones. You and I, as Christians, are the anointed ones to go out and continue to speak the message that the disciples began to speak, that their, their offspring spoke, that their offspring spoke. Every person in here has a spiritual mom or dad. Somebody helped you, somebody prayed with you, somebody led you in the sinner's prayer. For me, it was, it was uh, uh, my mom. I remember, you know, kneeling by her bed, and, and of course, my mom and dad, I, 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 brought, I was brought up in the church. i have been to, a, 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 you know, a million Bible schools. I, I started attending church nine months before I was actually born. I mean, I, I, you know, I was in church. I had heard the message. I heard the message. I heard the message. But it was my mom who was the one who prayed with me, and, and, and that, was, that was it. And for some of you, um, it, it, was a, uh, it was a parent, it was a friend, it was a coworker, it was a, a, a beloved pastor. All of those people are important, and they're all part of this spiritual lineage. Uh, another thing that I heard just this morning, um, how many of y'all ever listened to Bethel Redding? You listen to their Sermon of the Week or Sermon of the Day or whatever. You should do that sometime. It's, it's some pretty cool stuff. Um, I just clicked on it this morning because I just wanted to have, have something to do while I was shaving. And, and uh, um, the guy was so powerful because he was talking about having a spiritual dad. He, he, came, he, he came up in, in the Jesus age. He didn't, he, you know, um, he just, it was a very interesting thing. And when he finally got saved, um, he didn't know anything about the Bible. He didn't know anything about Jesus. didn't know anything about the church. And got saved in a bunch of, he said it was a bunch of hippies. He said, I was the only one who wasn't a hippie there. And I walked down and, and the guy led, you know, he helped me go through a prayer. And, 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 and then he, he looked at me and um, he said, now you need a spiritual dad. And he goes, okay. He goes, um, and he calls two guys down. And they weren't much older than him because it, it was a young church body. But he brought these two guys down, and he said, um, so pick one of these guys as your spiritual dad. <laughs> and he's like, he's, and he was very honest. He said, so I went with the better looking one because it just made sense. But, but that guy was his spiritual father until he moved away. And then, or until he moved away from that area, and then he was working as a mechanic, and he was working on some guy's Jeep, and he was praying, God, I need another spiritual dad in my life. And he said, the Lord was just like, whoever owns this Jeep, that's going to be your new spiritual dad. And he's like, man, this is weird. <laughs> so the guy shows up. He said, I went to my boss and I said, hey, can I go over the bill with this man? Sure, man, go ahead. He said, so I'm going over this bill really slowly, hoping that he's going to bring it up. You know, he's going to go, hey, God told me you're my spiritual. And he said, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. He finally, he gets... Um, the man gets in his car, he starts the Jeep, and, and he said, I, I just couldn't let it go. And he, I walked over, and the guy rolls his window down, and he goes, um, God, God told me that you're supposed to be my spiritual dad. Are you a Christian? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy turns the key off, opens the door, and said, yes, I am, and I would love to be your spiritual dad. Most of us in the church, we don't think about that anymore. We don't think about being connected to somebody, um, being, being in, a, in a connection with somebody more mature than us and somebody less mature than us. 
But that's part of what family is. That's part of what the connectivity that Jesus is, is, is wanting for us to have. Again, remember, he's not praying that we will have unity first. He's praying that we will have unity with God first, and then a natural outflow of that is that we have unity with each other. Now, does unity mean that we have everything in common? Well, no. Okay? You just got to meet my better uh, third. Not better half, but my better third. My, my better half. Okay, Sally knows stuff I don't know. I still, to this day, Mike, would you get some ibuprofen? It's like, okay, is that Tylenol? Is that, I, I can't remember. remember. Which medicine does, which bottle is it in? Just tell me what the color of the bottle. Sally has certain gifts and giftings that I don't have. She's very much m way more prophetic than I am. But guess what? I'm way more merciful than she is. Now, that could be irritating, and it sometimes may be, but it's also a great partnership because God doesn't need for Sally and I to be identical. And so God is going to put you in relationship, in fellowship with people who are not like you, and that's okay. The world and the enemy wants it to make it be, that person's not just like me, so I can't be with that person. You should go, no, this is awesome. This is perfect because they match up. They have strengths where I have weaknesses, and it makes us work really, really good together. So um, back to uh, John chapter 17. Verse 22, the glory which you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one just as we are one. I and them and you and me that they may be perfect in unity so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you have loved me. And again, I'm doing this and an out, an out, uh, a, 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 a product of them being in unity with you and me is they're going to be in unity with each other and the world is going to see that and the world is going to be drawn to that. Now, I've got to be honest, I watched zero of the Democratic National Convention. But to be fair, I watched zero of the Republican National Convention. Um, I, you know, if I'm going to watch um, that, I'd just as soon watch, you know, Superman. Uh, because to me, it's, it's all about the same level of truthfulness. So, but from what I understand, both conventions just almost came to a standstill because of the disunity in the parties. Guess what will draw a world that's looking for unity? A church that is unified. Now, we're not talking about, again, about, well, you believe what you want to believe, and I'll believe what I want to believe, and you pray to, you pray to Buddha, and I'll pray to Yahweh, and you pray to, you know, your Uncle Bob. And, and... No, we cannot, we cannot move off of the truths of the Word, but outside of that, you know, I, I overheard uh, Herb talking this morning about um, somebody who was extremely um, uh, Calvinistic, and I, I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, I just do. It's, it's a problem that I have. So, um, <clears throat> no, but, but in, then we know people who are extremely, um, they're, they're post-tribbers, and they're, then there are people who are pre-tribbers, and there are people who uh, believe that all of the gifts of the Spirit are in complete, uh, in total flow today, and there are those uh, cessationists who say, no, no, they're not. But guess what? If I believe that Jesus is the Messiah, I believe that God, the Holy Father, I was separated him from him by my sin, and Jesus is the only means of, of propitiation, and I believe that, and I believe that the Holy Spirit has come and lived inside of me. It's okay if you and I don't agree with every other possible scenario because you and I may interpret some scriptures differently, and that's okay. But at the end of the day, I go, you're my brother in Christ, you're my sister in Christ, and because I'm in unity with the Father and you're in unity with the Father, we have no choice but to be in unity with each other. But we also get to be in unity with each other. And uh, most of us, just to, you know, Sarah and Kenan yesterday, having our, our miracle party, um, not everybody was involved in this, so this is not, don't feel bad. But how many of you, over the last year and a half, you were, you were involved in the praying for, for Oaks? Okay. Now, how do we feel now on this side of it? Victory. Absolutely. 
And we're unified in this. It's like, man, this is awesome. Well, I don't think that he should have done this. Well, I should, well, I don't like this color of the nursery. We don't care about all those things. 